Problem 130 states, which of the following inequalities is an algebraic expression for the shaded part on the number line above? In this case, I've shaded it purple to make it easier to, uh, to, to see on these videos. But this problem may look a, a bit complicated, but what they're really testing you is, uh, is whether you understand how to actually simplify an equation that has an absolute value in it. Remember that anything inside of an absolute value will become a positive number, regardless of whether x is positive or negative. So when you're simplifying it, you have to remember that anything that's inside the absolute value, you have to have both a positive and negative version of that. So that's what this question is really testing you. If you know that principle, then you can basically go through each of the answer choices and match them up to uh, what is uh, on that number line above. So let's start with A. The absolute value of x is less than or equal to 3 is the same as saying x is less than or equal to 3 or negative x is less than or equal to 3, right? Because the absolute value, either one of these, uh, you know, uh, when you plug it into this equation, it's going to get you, it's going to become x. So that's why when you simplify it, uh, you can basically turn them into these two separate equations. Now, is that, does that match what's up on the number line here? Not really. Here, uh, it's it, whatever this line is, it's going to be larger than negative 5, and it's going to be less or smaller than, than, than positive 3. So we might as well even just write out what, what, what the actual answer that we're going to be looking for is. In this case, it's going to be x is greater than or equal to negative 5, and x is less than or equal to 3. Let's continue with b x is less than or equal to 5. Well, right away we know that doesn't match any, any of the uh, equations we have up here, so it's not b either. Let's try c. x minus 2 is less than or equal to 3. What happens when we simplify this? When we move 2 to the other side, we get x is less than or equal to 5. Again, that's not one of these two, so we uh, take C out of the running. And with D, we get an X minus 1 is less than or equal to 4. We add 1 to both sides, we get X is less than or equal to 5. Again, that's not one of the answers. So we get rid of D. That leaves us with E, which is the answer. But, you know, just to, to show you why this is the right answer, I'm just going to do the problem anyway. X plus 1 is less than or equal to 4. And also, negative x minus 1 is less than or equal to 4. Now what happens when we get x on its own side? x is less than or equal to 3. We also get negative x is less than or equal to 5. Divide both sides by negative, and we flip the sign to get x is greater than or equal to negative 5. This and this match exactly this and this. And that's why E is the correct answer. Problem 131 says a factory has 500 workers, 15% of whom are women. If 50 additional workers are able to be hired uh, and all the present workers remain, how many of the additional workers must be women in order to raise the percent of women employees to 20%. So we have this little factory here. I'm just going to draw a fun little factory the smokestacks. You have a factory that has has men and women working in it. Now if you've just looked at this problem you might think, oh is this going to be a, a, a double set problem? Or am I going to have to draw a matrix? Actually no. It says that the factory has 500 workers in it right now, right? And 15% of them are women. We don't care how many men are in here right now. But um, what we, the first thing we want to do is, of course, find out how many women. How many women are in this factory? What is 15% of 500? I like to set up a ratio. So 15 over 100 percent is equal to x over 500. Cancel out the zeros, and you get, oh, well, you cross multiply. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 2 is uh, 7. So 75 women are in the factory right now. And they're saying that, uh, that they're going to add 
50 additional workers, right? So this is going to become 550 workers. I don't know if they're going to expand the factory. I don't know. I, I think it's might be some kind of... Uh, and they might be breaking the law, packing all those people in that factory. Anyway, 550 people now. And they want to know how many more women need to be hired, or, or of those 50 people they hire, what percentage need to be women, or how many of the additional workers need to be women in order to raise that percentage to 20%. So we need to figure out 20% over 100, which is 2 over 10, which is 1 over 5, is the same as how many women over 550 now. So cross multiply and you get 550 over 5 equals x and that also equals 5 goes into 550 110 times. So they will need a total of 110 women. They only have 75 now so let's take 110 and subtract 75 and what do we get when we do that? we end up with 35. So 35 women would need to be hired in order to raise that percentage to 20%. And that is answer choice E. Number 132. That's on the next page of the book. So number 132, in a small snack shop, the average arithmetic mean revenue was $400 per day over a 10-day period. During this period, if the average daily revenue was 360 for the first six days, what was the average daily revenue for the last four days? Okay, so total there are 10 days, right? We know that the average is going to be 400. So what they're saying is that for the first six days, they the revenue was six, three three sixty, and then for the last four days the revenue was something that we are going to be solving for. Hmm. Now all we have to do is cross multiply and solve for x. So six. Well, okay. So six times three sixty that is going to be uh, twenty one sixty. Four times x is just four x, and then the cross multiplying that I pointed out here earlier is going to get you four thousand. Subtract 2160 from both sides, and you are left with 4x equals uh, 1840. Then you divide 4 by 4, and you get x equals let's see, 460. And 460 is one of the answer choices. It is answer choice D, I believe. Yes, it is answer choice D. Number 133, a certain country had a total annual expenditure of 1.2 times 10 to the 12th last year. If the population of the country was 240 million, what was the per capita expenditure? So they're saying per person, you know, what was the expenditure? You're going to divide these. Now, when you look at this, you're, it's like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Do I list out all the zeros and then do a division problem? That's one way to do it. That actually might be pretty fast to do, to be completely honest. Um, but another way that you can tackle this problem is uh, a 240 million is the same as saying 240 times 10 to the 6, right? Because there are six zeros in a million. You can also move the decimal over two times to get 2.4 times 10 to the 8. You're moving it over two times, you're basically multiplying by 10 two times, right? So, so that's, these are all equal to each other. So let me rewrite the equation and put 2.4 times 10 to the 8th on the bottom. Okay, so far so good. Now up at the top, 1.2 times 10 to the 12th. We know that 1.2 is smaller than 2.4, so why don't we just move the decimal point over to get 12. So 12 times 10 to the 11th. Now what we do is we split this equation down the middle. We tackle the left side and we tackle the right side. On the right side, 10 to the 11th power divided by 10 to the 8th power is just the same as saying 10 to the 11th minus 8. And that is going to be 10 to the 3rd, which also equals just 1,000, right? Now on the left side, let's do the, uh, let's do the problem. Let's do the uh, division and see what happens. Okay, you move the decimal over 1, and 2 and 12 
that goes into it five times because that's going to be 20 and 5 and 2 is 10 plus 12. Yes, so 5. So the answer is going to be 5 times 10 to the third or 5,000. And 5,000 is going to be answer E. Number 134, a certain rectangular window, here's the window, yay, okay, so here's the window, a certain rectangular window is twice as long as it is wide, so twice as long, uh, so actually the window is like this, okay, so here we have our window, twice as long as it is wide, and its perimeter is 10 feet, so what are the dimensions? So perimeter is 10 feet. So perimeter is going to be x plus x plus 2x plus 2x. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6x equals 10 feet. So x is going to be 10 over 6. And that is going to be uh, 3 over 5. So we know x is going to be uh, 5 over 3, not 3 over 5, 5 over 3. We know 2x is going to be 10 over 3, because it's 2 times 5 over 3. So these are going to be your dimensions, 10 over 3 and 5 over 3. That is one of the answers. That is B. There we go. 135 says, oh, it has a drawing. So it looks like this. There's an x, and there's something that looks like this. And then this, and then this crazy kite looking thing, like that. You might be wondering, where am I going with this? Okay, so there's x and then there's y. And the problem says, in the diagram above, it shows the various paths along which a mouse can travel from point A, or point x, to point y, where it is rewarded with a food pellet. How many different paths from x to y can the mouse take if it goes directly from x to y without retracing any point along a path? Okay, so if the mouse starts here and it goes doo, 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 and it goes here and up and down, you know, that all that that's one type of path. So they're looking for all the different possibilities that this mouse could take. Well, here's a fork, so he has two different uh, two different choices he can make whenever he gets to this fork. Same here. There's another uh, air, uh, fork where he has to choose between route A and route B. When he gets to this point, he gets three separate choices uh, in terms of like where he can go. So there's actually three different choices here. What you do is you just multiply these. 2 times 2 times 3, which is going to be 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12. And 12 is going to be answer choice C. 136. Ah, 136 just says if the operation, little target symbol here, is defined by x target y um, equals square root of x y for all positive numbers x and y then 5 target 45 target 60 equals what? Well let's figure this one out first. 5 times 45 is going to be what? That's going to be 225. We square root that and we get 15, right? So then we have 15 target 60 we multiply those together and square root them, and we have 900, and that equals 30. Answer choice A. And remember, whenever you see these weird symbols that the GMAT gives you, they're telling you that you have to follow a particular rule that they also give you. Remember, we're doing 5 uh, target 45 first, and that's why we ended up with 15 here, and then we plug the 15 back into the equation, and that's how we got the 30. All right, I think I'm out of time, so check me out in the next video, and uh, we'll tackle 137.